Hello and welcome to the 300th episode of Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Now without much ado, over to our CEO Dhirendra Kumar for a master class on wealth creation with mutual funds. Thank you for being here and I will just set the context, what are we going to talk about, how mutual funds come into play and why it is not critical. It is inevitable, you know, if you don't do it, you are losing time and I will not scare you, all of you are relatively young. So let me just, you know, list you four or five things which, which does not come very intuitively to us. We don't really re think of money in, in that context. One is that, you know, the most dangerous myth is that playing it safe will take care of it. Because in all other dimensions of life, playing it safe takes care of it. That is why in money issues as well, playing it safe that you work hard, you earn, you spend and whatever you save, leave it in the bank and it is safe, it's taken care of. This is actually a very dangerous myth. This is a myth because uh, this is a recipe for be remaining poor all your times because you work hard your money also needs to work hard second is that the moment you try and get venturesome about your money then all the roads to enhancing return on your investment it's is you know filled with all kind of landmines everybody is an interested party everybody would like to take him in your direction and you get scared sometimes sometimes you get greedy sometimes the person who is actually after you, persuading you to do something, happens to be your friend, happens to be your relative. You, you know, implicitly trust him. Uh, so that's, that's another thing, you know, so you have to make your money work hard. And that is what we are here for, setting the premise that why you need to be thoughtful about uh, the money that you'll earn, save, and why it is, you know, and it is not a matter of choice, why it is compulsory why you can't do without it. You know, most of the time, by remaining safe, you are basically losing the opportunity of, you know, you are losing on time. And for your investments to be productive and be rewarding, time is the most crucial thing. You need time on hand for it to, for it to really work for you harder. And the magic of compounding actually gets triggered. And the earlier you start, so many a times, you know, many of you, many youngsters who start, uh, who should start, but they don't, simply because, you know, it's very natural for you to not start. When you start your job, first time you get a, you know, uh, experience of being financially independent. You are at liberty and freedom to invest, spend that money the way you want to. And uh, understandably at this age, when you are getting started, you will have 100 needs and limited resources. You know, the initial phase is critical. Initial phase is critical not because you will build, you know, you will have sizable money and you will have time. The first year of your earning is the habit formation thing. If you start with your 500 rupees, that is, that the, because the magic of 500 rupees is not that it will become a sizable thing. It is that you will have 6,000 rupees at the end of year that you have accumulated. And if it has grown, you will understand that the money has worked for free. You know, you, so far you haven't got any money for free. And this is where the magic happens. From a small amount contribution, turning it into a capital. And uh, so whether it is 500 becoming 6,000 or 1,000 rupee becoming 12,000, depending on, you know, uh, your comfort. But it is more a habit formation and get going with that. You people haven't experienced inflation in the context, but you would have heard stories. Uh, any of you got a sense that, you know, your father told you that hum jab chote the, to dood itne rupe ka tha aur ghee itne rupe kilo milta tha. That's inflation. Some of the big ticket thing that we do in our life, that has gone out of hand. And for you to be really on top of things, you have to understand that what inflation is. So why it is, you know, it is critical to make your money work harder because otherwise you will earn, you will save keep it in the locker or leave it in the savings bank account and the money apparently will look as if it has remained constant or it is growing a little bit but it is actually going down in value. 
it is actually a very the most dangerous thing that is happening we feel that compounding is magic but the reverse of that is the inflation and that is something which is devastating for most people just earning saving and putting keeping it aside is not good enough you need to invest in equity you need to invest in equity for the long run why equities do well or beat inflation over the long run simply because when you buy a share you are buying the ownership of a company and any investment that you make translates into either you own things or you are lending money when you own things you are entitled to all the benefits that ownership will get you when you own something you when you own the company you are entitled for all the future cash flows of the company a part of that cash flow comes to you in the form of a dividend what typically happens is whether you invest in stocks or whether you invest in a stock fund the promise is that it is likely to beat inflation and why it is likely to beat inflation or why they generally beat inflation simply because there are the companies which function whether any company provides any money produces some goods or a service for a company to survive and more so thrive it must be a economically viable activity it must be able to do things because all the inputs to a company providing any service or goods or manufacturing goods must be inflation adjusted think of a maruti car in 1984 this company was launched and it started producing car and this car used to cost 45000 rupees maruti 800 the long bonnet one and uh, over a period of time that same maruti 800 maybe it has transformed into maruti alto and now maybe it costs about 3 1/2 4 lakh rupees but 3 1/2 4 lakh rupees from 84 to 2004 how many years 40 years if you look at this inflation adjusted price from 45000 to 3 1/2 lakh or 4 lakh i don't know the the exact price but this is something where i would say that this maruti 800 the cost has come down by nearly a third or maybe half if you adjust it for inflation and uh, which means that they are able to deliver you a superior product at a lower price adjusted for inflation and because companies have to survive adjusted for inflation because wages will go up input costs will go up steel prices will go up you know the the renters and the electricity bill and every all the inputs that goes into manufacturing or providing a service will go up and for it to be viable it must be doing it in an economically viable way which means that it must be inflation adjusted and if it and if it is able to you know make profits and increase prices in line with the inflation so you being a owner of it you are this is the only promise this is the only hope for your investment because equity is necessary if you want to beat inflation and the problem is that equity happens to be a very volatile asset equity happens to be very volatile asset because equity tends to do well but in between it is very volatile simply because uh there are a lot of factors which affects equities outlook or equity performance or movement in the equity market in the short run the only way you can protect yourself is by having a long term frame because if you don't have if you are able to if you are putting your short term money something which is important in the short run you will be needing it that is the money which you can't put it so aligning this understanding uh, appreciating so then comes you know the theoretical thing which you keep listening is asset allocation asset allocation is something where you diversify your money across multiple assets you buy stocks you buy bonds or you buy a stock fund or you buy a bond fund and you also buy some alternative asset or you know many a times people think that real estate uh, is another dimension to the investment asset allocation is crucial but not at that your stage for the first 3 4 years don't worry about asset allocation but beyond that once you have accumulated something meaningful as a result of your disciplined savings and putting it to work is that you need to allocate so that you are able to get some insurance against the sudden surge and decline in the market and that is what gives you a very different kind of uh, stability initially you don't need to worry because you have not not much to lose so now i have set the context that what you need to do what you don't need to do and uh, now i am coming to 
Why mutual fund for wealth creation? Why mutual fund for wealth creation? Simple. You can do a 500 rupee recurring deposit. Uh, as I told you that it's a very risky asset if you are investing for the short run. And it takes a great deal of effort to earn money. If you don't diversify, it can go down. With small amount of money, put, putting it to work. And this is where mutual funds comes into play. What I suggest is that most of you, because you are young, you have the time on your side. The joy of investing in equity is big fun. Maybe do a little bit of that. But make sure that a good part of your investment, you are investing in a diversified vehicle. That is, the, that is the deal. That is the game with the mutual fund. Instead of buying a stock which can go up and down, a company which can die. One more thing I would like to add, which, you, which will not be, you know, you, you people don't worry much about it right now. Uh, but you will have to worry about it. As the saying goes that, you know, death and taxes are inevitable. If you hold a mutual fund, the fund manager might be buying and selling every day and it doesn't matter. You are not liable to pay taxes till you sell it. So if you hold it for 20 years, you are not liable for any taxes. Only when you sell it, only and if you sell it after you retire, you will have no other income. That will be the only gain. Maybe you fall in a no tax bracket. So you can plan things much better if you and so there could be a great value in choosing a fund which you can hold it for a lifetime because you, it will be completely tax sheltered till you realize it, till you sell it. Review and rebalance your portfolio. This is where value research will come into play and uh, set up your portfolio on value research online. And uh, once you set it up, it will be able to alert you the poor investment that you have made, the great investment that you hold, and you will be able to clean up, reorganize. And this is a continuous process. Keep doing it every, every year. Don't do it every now and then, because doing it too often, you will create a large tax bill for yourselves. Make sure that you, know, you are investing diligently and in a disciplined manner. Any money that you need to spend in the foreseeable future, in one year, two years, three years time, just plan some liquidity. Don't depend on the market. That's, that's all that is needed. And rest of the time money, you keep accumulating. You do your SIP, and when you retire, Take the money out from your investments and you will get a tax sheltered income for yourself for which you will not have to depend on anyone. Accumulating and deaccumulating, which is compounding at a higher rate is the simplest formula and don't complicate it. If at all you complicate it, if at all you get you know, greedy in between, if at all you get greedy because you think that you have got that excellent idea, make sure that you, know, you are really validating that proof of concept and then getting at it so that it does not derail your overall plan. It does not really you know, put the apple cart at risk uh, for your financial independence. So wish you very best. I am a young investor. Uh, I start at a very early. Uh, uh, I have a student loans to pay off. Uh, so I want to balance, uh, how should I uh, balance my debt and uh, same time uh, investment? Look at your student loan repayment as an expense and you know, invest as much as you can beyond that. And if you are unable to, think of it like you know, it is an investment in your own future which has been done and you are repaying the debt. Sir, I want to ask like when am I ready for stock market, for investing in stock market? And if, if I think that right now I am, should I sell 60% of my mutual fund and invest that in stock market to gain more? Should I do that? It entirely depends, you know, nobody can tell you when you are ready for the stock market. And you will also not know when you are ready for the stock market. It is how you behave when you are faced with a big decline. It will be, it'll be tested that whether you are prepared for a stock market. Because stock market, you know, preparedness for the stock market is not tested in good times. It is always tested in the extreme times with your patience, with your diligence, with your understanding. And uh, I think, you know, it is not a matter of 60%, 10%, 5%. I would say that just, you know, the, the, the prudent thing to, to my understanding will be that if you first develop a framework of what will you invest in, how will you invest, why will you invest, and are you going to invest for the very, very long term? Are you going to buy and hold it for many, for many, many years? if that is the strategy. 
then you decide that okay 25 percent of your money and keep let it run let it run for one or two years in two three years you will get an understanding of how your 25 percent money has done as compared to your mutual fund and you will have the winner and then you can actually decide so be very objective about it and in between and but i would say that don't give up on your stock investing aspiration because it is a worthwhile thing it if you have the time if you have the inclination and if you have the temperament because more than effort or you know more than financial analysis more than the foresight to spot a company it is the, your own discipline and the temperament which is very material uh, to succeed with stock investments hi sir uh, mujhe ye puchna tha ki uh, as a salaried person i have two three or maybe four uh, long term goals so should i do an sip for every goal or maybe should i take some other approach you don't need to do four sips for your goal if you are able to spot one good fund for those goals uh that is good enough make sure that you know that money is good enough for to uh, you know some of those go you know uh, there could be a goal uh which you need the money for after 5 years there could be a goal for which you need the money after 25 years uh they can all be in couple of funds because basically you have to earmark enough money or you have to save enough money so that at periodic at certain periodicity you will have accumulation you don't necessarily uh need to have separate funds but if you keep separate funds there is actually a mental alignment with many of these things mentally we tend to you can actually have different folios in the same fund of different amount so my question is like for example i am investing for like uh, from the age of 25 uh, so at what time we should pause or stop uh, investing or just wait for a while you should never pause investing you should take out money when you need money you should move take your take your money out and invest in something else if it is not doing well these are the only reasons because what do you do with the money if you take out taking out money just because it has gone up may not be a very wise thing and it is not a wise thing you should actually that is that is what the whole master class was about that do your asset allocation de risk yourself once it has become meaningful and uh, uh, take out money when you need money take out take uh, take out money when your investments are not as good as you expected them to be and basically that is a that is not taking money out that is making a change in your investment my question is more overly a psychology related question so if we invest at a younger age it's uh, not considered very cool among youngsters so uh, like it it actually seems to be living like a conservative person more overly uh, how can we handle uh, this thing don't tell your friends that you are saving Hi sir I have heard a lot about you finally got a chance to meet you in person so I just wanted to ask like what will be the basic tips what will be the basic advice you will give to someone who just start its investing don't think just start do nothing else and don't ask me don't ask your neighbor do do nothing uh, just do your kyc and start doing it there is nothing in investing no uh, which can be learned uh from others you have to experience it because you earn your money your and everybody's context is different nobody you cannot really learn from anyone else uh including losses you have to lose your own money to actually formulate the plan that what happens so just start find a fund where you can do a 500 rupee sip and do it i have a generalized question with this generation we are uh, try to um, go with the trend but sometimes we forget to make a balance or to uh, consider the liquidity as well so uh, it's important to have a emergency funds and another corpus towards the goals but considering the taxation as well so we tend to go for tax uh, tax benefit funds that is elss but how to keep a balance maintaining the liquidity for the short uh, short goals short term goals what would you suggest i would suggest that you know your short term goals and short term goals meaning the money that you are likely to need in one year's time and the money that you are likely to need in three years time it should be invested extremely conservatively in fact my suggestion will be that you know even if you are not investing in a mutual fund if you keep that money in a bank account the money that you need in the last next one year it will still earn 3 and 
And if you put money in a very successful short term debt fund, it will earn you maybe six and a half, seven percent. And if you are very uncomfortable with choosing one, might be, you know, because for that emergency fund, the money which will be a constant and it will be a defined amount. And you def definitely need that money after one year. It is not going to make hell of a difference. On one lakh rupees, you will earn three and a half percent, three and a half thousand rupee. Instead of that 6,500 rupee, which will not make, which is not a make or break thing. But for your long-term investments, not investing in equity and earning 6-7% or 8% and not earning that 15-16% over a long period of time is a huge deprivation. And today I would say that you know people should not worry about emergencies. People definitely should worry about their short-term goals and invest accordingly. So my question is, uh, how should I choose a fund for my future? Like I need uh, good return. So usually, I uh, how I choose is I saw I see uh, last uh, how it uh, performed for last one year or three year. But uh, like right now, I'm invested in five mutual fund, from which three are doing good, but two are not doing good. So I changed uh, it to new uh, two new uh, funds, and they are also not doing good. So I don't like I'm now confused. Ki check which is good or not. How many days you invest? It's been one year. One year. And in between you started and you closed and then you started again in, the, in another bunch of fund. Uh, yeah. I will give you a method of how I go about choosing a fund. And uh, I will also make one suggestion to you that don't look at it very often when you are getting started. When you invest once then do it for और उसके पहले देखो भी मत क्योंकि बार-बार देखने से ना ये बिल्कुल जैसे इफ यू प्लांट अ यू नो यू 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 नो प्लांट अ ट्री एंड सैपलिंग एंड यू नो यू रोज खोद के देख रहे हो कि बढ़ा है कि नहीं बढ़ा है तो बढ़ेगा ही नहीं और वही हो रहा है तुम्हारे साथ तो डोंट डू दैट बट आई विल टेल यू हाउ आई गो अबाउट चूजिंग अ फंड व्हिच आई विल व्हिच टेंटेटिवली आई विल एंड अप ओनिंग फॉर कपल ऑफ इयर्स my starting point is I will choose a diversified fund because I've been telling you all this while that, you know, diversify, 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 and that's one of the key benefit. And there are five categories of fund which are diversified. One is that large and mid cap fund, multi cap fund, flexi cap fund, value fund, and the tax saving fund. I will choose, you know, I will go to value research online and choose these five categories. Then what I will do is our rating is a uh, you know, a scale of risk adjusted performance, a fund which actually, what is a good fund? A fund is a, you know, a good fund, a good equity fund is the one which rises well when the market goes up and the one which falls little less when the market falls down. And that is how over a period of time you make little more money than the market and you fall little less than the market and that is how you generate higher return. And if you index, invest in an index fund, you get exactly as much. No more, no less, just the expense bit comes down. So, our risk adjusted rating is basically a reflection of this. A fund, a rating tries to capture a fund which falls less or a fund which rises well. In a, so, my universe will be 5 star and 4 star fund of these 5 categories. These are funds which I can hold for a long time. Why I will not hold a sectoral fund or a thematic fund or a small cap fund or a mid cap fund? Because there are times when these funds do extraordinarily well and there are times when these funds also do very poorly. By having a diversification, these funds, you are actually buying the full market or it has the fund manager has the flexibility of investing all over, which has the highest potential. And that is why I'll do that. Once I do that, so I will end up with, you know, still I will end up with, you know, about 15, 20 funds. Then what I will do is, I will choose a fund which has 7 8 years of you know life that will also drop some of the funds because there will be many funds with 3 year 5 year history which will figure out why I will do that because then I will have two things to look at uh, after that choosing a universe of 5 star and 4 star fund a fund manager who has remained there because he was the fund manager of a fund and I have chosen a fund based on the rating but he is no longer the fund manager of that fund so he's gone I will not be able to attach the perform attribute that performance to him. So that's one. Second is, I will look at 
the fund who has done the best in the falling market as well as the rising market in this universe as well. And they, here I will go with you know long term return, 5 years, 7 years, 8, 10 year returns and how it did in the poor, good bad times and the good times and I will choose one or two fund and not look at it for full one year. Jo passive funds hote hai, are they also good or like act, uh, active funds pe hi hum invest karna chahiye? If you are meeting me, you should choose an active fund because I explained you how you should go about choosing one. But if you can't do it, invest in a passive fund because they will get you 80% get you of the benefits of investing in equity. There is a possibility that some of these active funds will not do well in, in some time period. In some time period, they will do better. And we don't know which these times will be. Our effort is that we should be able to spot a company, uh, a fund, which will do well better than the index over 5, 7. And that is why we are looking at risk adjusted performance, a fund which has done well in a falling market, a fund which has done well in a rising market. And that is what it will translate into its ability to beat the index. But if you are unable to find one, choose an index fund. You will get as much as the index, no more, no less. And when choosing an index fund, you have very simple thing to look at. Just look at the expense. The lower the expense, the better the performance or the closest the performance. Uh, I want to ask you that uh, while investing for uh, mid-term and long-term long uh, goals, uh, what should be the plans and strategies that uh, I should know about uh, the tax strategies and uh, investment strategies? You should do nothing. Just for your medium-term goal, long-term goal, choose a fund, keep investing and when you need the money, start pulling out um, six months, one year, two years, depending on how long you have invested from that, from that investment. And in between, if that investment is, turns bad, not so good as, as expected or as good as when you, when you actually started investing. You started investing based on what I was saying that, you know, a five star fund, four star fund, which is doing well. But after you start investing, maybe for one year it was doing well and after that it stopped doing well. Maybe look at the reason, look at the one or two line which value such analyst will put alongside that fund and uh, if the rating has slipped, slipped dramatically, I really worry about a fund which slips from three star to one star, I take my money out. Sir, during this family gathering, there is this general question that comes up like, ki whom should you trust with your money? And like seeing so many platforms and the bank RMs even pushing to invest with them. So what is that one advice that you can give us like whom should we actually trust with our money for financial advice? The best thing is to learn a little bit. And second best is that, you know, keep looking. Financial advice as a profession has not evolved. There are different ways you can actually, you can do it directly. You can invest on your own. And that is also a nice way of, you know, because for your 5,000 rupee, 500 rupee, 10,000 rupees, you, nobody will be interested in serving. Because to provide advice, one need to really understand your context. One really need to understand your temperament, your goals. Nobody will have the time and inclination because it will not be an economically viable uh, activity for him, for your 5,000, 10,000 rupees. Once it becomes something meaningful, then it will be of interest to everyone. Then bank, region, you know, relationship managers will get after your life because they can look at your bank account and actually be interested in serving you because they can earn commission. That is the time when you should, and if at all you don't have the temperament, and if you don't have the understanding, then ask some question. Where is he from? Is he interested in knowing so much about you? Is he a product pusher? Because you know, these are questions. You, it is almost like hiring a person. You have to interview him and to understand how he will serve you. And uh, many, and it's a very dicey profession because many of the advisors, uh, they come with a, they pretend to be advisor, but they are basically selling and uh, you know, they're investment salesmen. So sir, a few weeks back, I was talking to a friend and he told me that he switched to passive investing altogether. And I asked him why and he said ki the fund he was invested in, the fund manager changed, he exited the fund and the fund retorted, the performance uh, went down. So my question is, when researching for when investing in a fund, how important is the fund manager's background or qualification is? And 
um, if the manager or fund manager changes, then should you like revisit that uh, decision? The fund manager is the most important person or variable in the whole fund performance. And uh, if the fund manager changes, you should get alerted. You should be worry worried about it. But many a times, the fund manager change is for the better. Sometimes the fund manager change is for the worse. So figure out, I will give you an example. You know, recently a fund was launched and normally at Value Research, our whole hypothesis is that never invest in a fund without a track record. But here was a fund manager who came with a track record of 30 years of excellent performance. He managed some fund 20, 30 years back and he managed it for 10, 15 years. He did so well that when we look at his long-term performance, even now because of those periods, it, it actually stacks up at the top. I was very excited and tempted to invest and it has actually turned out to be true. But at the same time, take note of one thing, which many young people getting started, great fund managers have lean period. And, you know, not so good uh, fund managers also turn good. The real thing is that, you know, if you can look at 10 year, 15 year, 20 year period, over these periods, look at how many funds have been able to beat the benchmark. The whole talk that we get, I'm saying that, you know, investing in, in index fund is, may not be a bad idea. But if you're really wanting to beat the index and spending little effort in looking at alternatives, it might be worthwhile and it can be done. In today's digital age, uh, many influencers are promoting um, investing through SIPs or stocks, while our parents still recommend investing in um, real estate, gold, etc. Uh, today, younger generation are going for IPOs, stock trading, etc. So what do you suggest, which is the right investment path? And if you are referring to, let's say, mutual fund and stocks, then is it uh, really possible to you know, buy a house at the same time and do a SIP and stock investments? You know, for youngsters, any of these things, you know, is a good thing. I'm not uh, very averse to, you know, people trying out things because the biggest learning comes from doing things, not by listening to masterclass. This could be helpful, but, you know, I'm not expecting that you will listen to me and you will start fo following it tomorrow because we all will have aspirations, we all will have different contexts, we all will have a very different importance of money that we are earning. But I would like a, most people in next initially initial one year, two year, three year, dabble in stock, do some trading, do some speculation, buy some crypto, lose that money, you know, um, or do do all this because you know these are all part of learning. But don't let any of the learning go waste. And in in the process, develop a framework. And I think you know at Value Research in our magazines and everything, we try and give people framework rather than a prescription. Because if you are able to develop a framework that when you should buy a house, my framework for buying a house is that if you are going to live in that house, by all means buy it. If you are going to invest in a house expecting that the price will go up, never buy that house. Never buy that house for a simple reason. It's a very big ticket purchase. It is not liquid. And when you go to buy a house from an investment point of view, the fellows who are actually selling that house they will tell you that this is the last piece. And when you go to sell yourself, you will find that there are no buyers. So you will not be able to sell. It is a very illiquid thing. It is a very high, big ticket size thing. And you will borrow for such a long period, such a large amount of money. You will end up with a liability without a meaningful asset. That is, that is also a possibility. But if you are going to live in that house, that might be worthwhile and you will have the, you know, the pleasure of owning a house. Uh, then how much money should you borrow for buying that house? That is another question. When it comes to house, people get very emotional. You know, be a little realistic about it. Make sure that, you know, 30% or 35% of your income is not going towards your EMI, which means you have to actually scale down your house purchase, you know, the value of the house that you're buying. Second is that you are able to wait for it so that you are able to accumulate your down payment to the extent that only that much money you are borrowing which, will, which can be supported by 35% of your income. And the third thing is that ensuring that you are going to start living in that house so that you start saving on the house rent immediately. 
If these three things fall in place, this is the framework. Uh, so, sir, you have talked about as uh, asset allocation during the session many times. So, when we invest in like multi cap funds or flexi cap funds, the fund manager takes care of everything like diversification, allocation, etc. But when we are investing in stocks directly, so how to decide the allocation between large cap, mid cap, and small cap? So, is there any formula or something like this? No, when investing in stocks, no, don't look for formula. Look for a good company, and look for a good company which you which remains good. And keep looking at it time and again so that whenever it turns bad, you are able to sell it. Don't bother about large cap, mid cap, small cap. There could be a great small cap company and there could be a great large cap company. There are small cap companies which die, there are large cap companies which die. Actually, my question is that there are people who never started investing in stocks, mutual funds. They are way far from the market. And if they want to start at this point of time, should they start investing in mutual funds, let's say, because stocks is not something they should do in short term. Look, mutual fund is nothing but a bunch of stocks. Just that you buy the bunch of stocks with great convenience, it actually, you know, it, it, it has the shock absorber. When you buy a mutual fund, what is it? You are buying 50 stocks. 20 of them will go down, 20 of them will go up, and 10 of them will go nowhere. Any day, mutual fund, equity mutual funds don't go up and down by 5%, 10%. But every day, there are 50 stocks which go up and down by 5%, 10%. This is the difference in diversification. So, if anybody, there are two ways of going about, you know, basically what you're asking is that if somebody has to start now, how should he go about doing it? If it is you, who has all one's life, then start with a small cap fund. Start with an index fund, start with a multi-cap fund, it doesn't matter. Just do it and less the next one year and don't buy that Nike shoes. That's one. Second is that, you know, if my father, my father's friend or my, you know, wo jo bar hamare yaan, jo guard sahab baithe huye hain, unko agar invest karna ho, to mera advice different hoga. Main unka na SIP kisi ke saath bitha karke, unko aggressive hybrid fund mein lagaunga. Kyunki tumhara na, पांच हजार रुपए लगा हुआ ऊपर नीचे होता रहेगा तुम्हें कोई खास दिक्कत नहीं होगी और तुम्हें पता भी है सो यू आर लिटिल इवॉल्व उनके लिए ना दैट विल एक्चुअली बी एडिशनल शॉक एब्जॉर्बर वो जब दो तीन साल वो हो जाएगा ना देन ही विल बी रेडी फॉर अ मल्टी कैप फंड सो माय एडवाइस टू दीज टू पीपल विल बी डिफरेंट एंड दैट इज दिस इज ऑल्सो समथिंग विच वी हैव फैक्टेड इन वैल्यू रिसर्च फंड एडवाइजर when you depending on your experience depending on your scale because 5000 for you will be very different value five different for 5000 for him will be of, of completely different value you know well, that's all we have for you in today's episode keep watching this space for more information if you like the show do subscribe to our youtube channel take care bye for now